Hello everyone, Phil here for KO Gaming, and welcome to the Hateful Truth Rebooted, where I give you maximum truth and minimum bullshit regarding the latest video game releases, and today we're going to talk about a little fantasy action platform puzzle combination game with a lot of charm and a lot of interesting elements called Unravel. I first got wind of this game back at E3 2015 when one of the lead game devs went up on stage to present his game for the first time and was visibly shaking because he was so nervous so obviously this game is not made by some huge big AAA studio and I definitely wanted to give it a look this year when it was released this past week the premise of unravel is pretty interesting you play a small miniature yarn character called Yarny who has somehow magically been brought to life it's his job to travel inside of photographs that will teleport you into certain stages of an old woman's life it's your job to make it from point A to point B surviving along the way many different challenges drownings, hazards, even wild animals that are after you at certain points to get to the end of the stage, retrieve a patch, bring it back to the old grandmother's house, add that patch to her scrapbook, and somehow restore a memory that possibly she had forgotten about during the course of her life. So just the premise of trying to restore an old woman's memories by going through a platformy puzzle game is pretty interesting at its core. Now, Yarny will face many different challenges over the course of Unravel, some of which are very much in tune with a classic platformer, such as jumping and grabbing the edges of ledges to pull himself up, but there's also some really unique mechanics using Yarn in the game. Yarny can throw out a big strand of his own body to latch onto hooks, and other things that glow red in order to do various things. He can pull items, he can push items, he can climb up the yarn to scale tall ledges, he can rappel down the yarn to go down without hurting himself long distances, he can swing from the yarn, which actually creates some pretty cool physics mechanics and momentum mechanics that aren't present in other platforming games. And overall, the combination of all the different factors of Unravel makes it feel like a really unique platforming experience and something you've probably never experienced before, even in similar games using a yarn-like mechanic. One of the coolest things about the game is that you actually have to manage the length of the yarn that you use. If you use too much yarn or attach your body to too many hooks throughout a stage, you'll actually get to a point where you cannot progress because you've run out of yarn. And the goal to progress is to actually reach certain checkpoints throughout the stages where you get to a new spool of yarn that allows you to have more yarn to your body and continue on with the stage. So again, another really unique aspect, something cool and different that I really liked about the game that I've never seen before in another platforming or puzzling experience. The challenge level of the puzzles in Unravel can vary greatly. Some could be incredibly easy, such as just swinging across a gap or attaching to a ledge and pulling yourself up. Some can actually rack your mind with how the heck do I figure this out? And quite honestly, through my playthrough of this game, I found myself probably two or three times really distinctly stumped on how to solve a puzzle. Now that's a good thing. I like the fact that there's different challenge and because you're using different kinds of physics and pulling and pushing and movement and momentum mechanics, that it makes you think differently from other classic platforming games. But it does need to be said that I feel that sometimes I think they could have been a little bit more explanatory in what they expected you to do to figure out a puzzle, especially when you finally figure it out and you're like, man, if I had only known this one mechanic that has not been explained in the game, I probably would have solved that in two minutes instead of 15. But I think that's actually part of the challenge of the game and what adds to its length and replayability. Over the course of the game, you'll be traveling through 11 different stages that go through many various different locations, including warm climates on places like farms and forests, deep down underground into caves where you'll be chased by wild animals, and then later on in the game, the game tales take a little bit of a darker turn when you go to places like a toxic waste dump, and yes, even a frozen winter wonderland graveyard. So there are a lot of various locations, and by honest, quite honestly, the graphics are amazing. They have blew me away with the amount of detail, the realistic look of the game. It really felt like you were running through these real-life locations, and it really presented some of the most stunning visuals I've ever seen in a platformer ever. And it also does need to be said that Unravel runs at a full 60 frames per second the entire way through, which is a nice touch for a game like this, where typically for a platformer you may not care if it runs at 30 or 60 frames. It really was a nice touch, and I did appreciate it. Now you might say, outside of just plain surviving and getting through these stages by reaching the checkpoints and getting more yarn added to your body and then ultimately collecting the patch at the end of the stage, 
Is there anything else to do in the game? And the answer is yes. First of all, there are collectible patches, which are considered the secret items of the game. The more you collect, obviously, it adds up a tally. And if you collect all of them, you'll get a trophy or achievement appropriately, depending on what console you're playing. In addition to that, there are hidden challenges that will also reward you with trophies or achievements. For example, finding a particularly well-hidden secret in a stage, or maybe swinging from a certain amount of ledges back and forth without ever touching the ground. Down, those things will also net you some pretty cool achievements in the game. Now, I wish that there was a little bit more and I could tell you there's tons of collectibles or whatever. Not really. There's only five of these badges per stage and there's only a, a limited amount of these extra challenges. The bottom line is once you do play through the game once, unless you want to really go back and do all the challenges and get the patches, there's not much replayability here and that does need to be said. Ultimately, the game took me about five and a half to six hours to beat. Depending on your own skill level with previous puzzle and platformer games, it could take you longer, it could take you less, and also if you are trying to be a completionist and get every single hidden item, it's obviously going to take you way longer than it took me to beat the game. But hey, a five and a half to six hour experience for a $20 price tag isn't too bad, isn't too shabby, and the fact that there were original mechanics introduced in the game made me feel like I was playing something new and original rather than something that was just a rehash platformer, and I felt that the value was there for what I paid. So let's recap the positives and negatives. The positives, amazing graphics with a wide variety of locations, some really unique and interesting platforming and puzzle mechanics that I've never really seen in any game before, and a pretty decent value for your dollar. For $20 getting, you know, five and a half to six hours of gameplay with also replayability with the collectibles, that's great. Some negatives. Quite honestly, I do really feel that there were there should have been better explanation of certain mechanics of the game. There were certain puzzles that I got stuck on for 15 to 20 minutes that I really could have solved in two if I had understood a certain mechanic of the game. And the game really doesn't do much in the grounds of a tutorial outside of just explaining the real basic controls in the very first stage. You're kind of thrown to the wolves to figure it out for yourself. Some might argue, oh, that's great because then you actually have to figure it out for yourself and it adds length and challenge to the game. I think maybe just explain the mechanic to me and I'll probably figure it out and like the game a little bit better. Number two, there was a little bit of wonkiness in the game when it came to some of the platforming mechanics. I noticed there was a little bit of clipping issues where I would sometimes pass through a platform by accident. It wasn't prevalent, but I have to call out it happened a couple of times. But the good news, and I'll turn this into a positive, is that the checkpoints are frequent enough that if this does happen, you can easily just start back from the beginning of the puzzle. It's not like you're going to be forced to redo tons and tons of stuff if you die because the checkpoints are frequent enough. So even when one of these occurrences happen, it didn't ruin my gameplay day, it just was a little mild annoyance and then I had to restart the puzzle really quickly. So overall, I found Unravel to be a cute little, unique, well-designed, beautifully articulated in the artistic style and graphics platforming puzzle game that really left a resonance with me. I hope that they actually make a sequel to this game that maybe could even be a full-fledged game, you know, for 60 bucks, give me a good 15 hours of Yarny where he's going through various different kinds of stages a la Little Big Planet. Maybe even make this game into almost Little Big Planet-esque where you can make your own stages and stuff. I think that would be absolutely awesome. This game had enough uniqueness, enough charm, and enough things about it to deserve a full-fledged game release rather than this limited digital release for a discounted price tag. But overall, weighing all the factors in, the fact that it's six hours long but it only costs $20, the fact that there's some really awesome graphics and puzzle mechanics, but the fact that there are a few nuisances, I'm actually going to give Unravel an 8.5 out of 10. That's right. For what you're going to pay, you're going to get a unique platforming and puzzle experience. It delivers on what it promises. And although it's a little light in the story department, I think that the game is enough to warm your heart and win you over with a little bit of story that is there and the really fun mechanics that are in the game that you've never done before to warrant a purchase. So if you're into platforming and puzzling, I highly recommend Unravel. I definitely think you should check it out. 8.5 out of 10 for me, and I hope others will enjoy this game as well. Well, that is it for this episode of The Hateful Truth Rebooted, everyone. I sure hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, please check the description of this video for a link to my playlist where you can watch my full unedited playthrough of Unravel over on my gameplay channel, DSP Gaming. In addition, please check out the description for our Amazon Associate link, as well as a link to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time on The Hateful Truth.